What it do YouTube? In this video, we're gonna be going over price action and what it means. Let's get straight into the video. Price action is one of those things lots of traders talk about, but when they talk about it, they're really vague and explain it and don't really help you understand what it actually means. I'll try to break that down for you pretty briefly in this video, give you a few examples how you can use to make your trading better. The textbook definition from Investopedia is price action is the movement of securities price applied over time. Price action forms the basis for all technical analysis of a stock, commodity, or other asset charts. So in the simplest way to explain price action is just watching the candlesticks themselves form and the time period or the time frame you're watching the candles form. That's all price action is. And once you get the fundamentals and basics down to price action, it makes everything else in trading very simple. It all really just comes down to the psychological aspects of trading and i think this is where a lot of traders go wrong before even learning price action and what certain candlesticks mean before even understanding the basic foundation of trading they just start throwing on lots of different indicators and oscillators they just cloud their vision and make trading much more difficult than it needs to be yeah, there's probably thousands tens of thousands of traders out there that literally only trade the volume candlesticks and maybe support and resistance because that's all you really need while trading there's really no reason i can think of to have the macd rsi the ttm squeeze and all these other oscillators on your chart and not to mention having four different oscillators in your chart at once it's really going to make trading a lot more difficult because you have to process four different indicators giving you a confluence area then you also have to execute the trade going about it and waiting for the perfect signal with all these oscillators crossing at the same direction, you know, a bunch of crossover alerts going off. You have to hope that one oscillator doesn't negate the other oscillator. And there's lots of rules and factors that come into play. But all you had to do is just look at price action and understand what the candlesticks are telling you. And if you just take off all these indicators and trade with a naked chart for one, two, three weeks, maybe a month, I can almost guarantee you, you'll be a better trader at the end of it. You're actually watching candlesticks form and move as opposed to relying on indicators that give you entry and exit signals. So before we go too far for it, I just want to look at this image real quick of candles and what they mean in terms of strength and price action occurs just like anything else like i mentioned supply and demand key levels obviously the higher the time frame the more you know significant they are so if you see one of these candles forming on like the daily or the weekly time frame you know they're gonna be more significant than, than seeing a candle like this on you know the five minute or the one minute time frame just being able to read price action on different time frames is gonna be able to help you and take better trades so the first example of a very strong candle is a candle that opens down here at lows it closes at the high or the low of the candle why is this strong because at one point of time, sellers had the candle down here. In the case of a green candle, sellers had price all the way down here, making this a red candle. Buyers were able to drive you all the way up through the open, push you past up. This candle just kept on getting bigger and bigger and closed you at the very high of the candle with no upper wick. And one of the things you need to keep in mind is wicks are kind of the most important part of a candle. It shows you how far buyers or sellers were able to push price and then where you know the opposite side stepped into the candle and closed you for the time. So looking at the opposite end of the spectrum, we have a pretty weak looking candle. Now, why are these candles weak? So in this case, for a red candle, you know, at one point of time, this red candle with a huge lower wick was a huge full body red candle. But somewhere in this candle, buyers bought you all the way back up and closed you with a huge lower wick, showing you that buyers are active in the market. And you see this kind of candle forming around the demand zone or forming off support or off a key level. It could be a sign for you to look to go long in the market because you know that buyers are active in the market and driving prices up higher. So in the case of a you know green wheat candle, you know this was a full body green candle at one point of time, but sellers stopped you at the high of the candle and closed you all the way back down to the low of the candle, showing you that buyers just gave up and were unable to keep the pressure on sellers and just kind of gave up and just roll over in the same candle and close you almost neither Lola candle, making this a pretty weak candle. So I'm not gonna break these all down. When you see these candles forming in real time, it just kind of comes back down to screen time. Over time, you'll start seeing these candles form. You'll start seeing them quicker, start identifying them quicker. So trading really just comes down to having screen time and you'll start recognizing these candles and understanding the psychology behind these candles and the price action without all these random indicators in your chart clouding your vision. So of course we're looking at all this stuff in hindsight so it's going to be a lot easier to you know identify this stuff but when you're trading in real time or trying to you know come up with a trade plan in real time it's not going to be this easy just looking at stuff in hindsight trying to figure out things out but one piece of advice I can give you guys is to always look left on the chart always have a higher time frame on your screen at all times so you're not too tunnel vision on the one minute or the five minute just have a general perspective of the stock you're trading or the equity you're trading so you know where you are on the chart 
in relation to the daily or the weekly time frame. You'll know when you're coming into big areas of resistance or big areas of support just by looking left on the daily time frame. You know, keep yourself in perspective and remember where you are while trading. The stock we're looking at now is Shopify, um, a stock I've talked about pretty much pretty recently in the past. So from a price action perspective alone, like I mentioned previously about candles, each of the candles forming around the 29 to 30 dollar region you all have these lower wicks down here. If you're a seller looking to short down here, and each time you come into the $30 region, you see this lower wick to the upside, it could be a hint or a sign, you know, based on price action that buyers are active down here and currently trying to push, you know, Shopify up from this $29, $30 region. So instead of trying to short down here, just by watching the candles form and seeing how they react to this low down here, it would give you more insight to the market and what buyers and sellers are doing rather than trying to watch like the MACD crossover down here. And this is the problem with lots of new traders. They come into the markets, they, you know, they watch these videos on how to, you know, trade and how with certain indicators like the MACD and RSI. And then your charts are all clear like this. You have three different oscillators down here. You can see down here that the RSI was you know, below 30. So lots of people would be like, oh, the RSI is oversold. It has to bounce down here. But all Shopify did down here was bounce between $31 and $40 for almost two months. But the RSI was oversold multiple, multiple times down here. The RSI was nearing overbought levels multiple times down here. It, it making it harder for you to make a decision because you have to worry about these oscillators trying to cross over and time perfectly hitting these support and resistance zones. We could just be watching the price action identifying these candles forming in real time and then taking action based off these rather than trying to wait for the RSI to reach overbought conditions to short the market. You'd be like, okay, I have this level marked up here at $42. Shopify has clearly hit $42 each time. And each time you come to this $42 region, you have pretty big upper wicks on the candles showing you that sellers are clearly, you know, sitting up in this region. It doesn't really make much sense to try to go long up here when you see the weakness in these candles versus trying to wait for the RSI, MACD, the MFI, and all these other indicators waiting to curl down at the specific time frame. not to mention their lagging indicators, where you could just get all this information just off these three candles right here. They all have upper wicks on them, showing you that sellers are clearly up here on uh, Shopify, and you could look to take a short position just off these few candles forming up here. These lines on Shopify come from higher time frames, so always have a higher time frame on your screen so you never forget these levels and you're never too um, tunnel visioned in, into the five minute time frame. So we can see that this uh, $40 region, where they come from, it came from August 26, 2019. It was the high uh, in 2019. And then this $30 region was the COVID lows. It also is lower down here from June, 2019. You can see perfectly that COVID lows at 4096 were perfect levels of support and resistance. And then that's the next step of price action. Just being able to identify support and resistance, and then watching how price reacts to them in real time. When you find these levels of support and resistance in the higher time frames, it makes it a lot easier because these levels are more respected. Each time you came into the $30 region, which is COVID lows, you had lower wicks. And each time you came into the $40 region, you had upper wicks. So that was a really easy trade both ways throughout this time period. And now you're watching Shopify breakout where 4096, turn those levels into support. And then we're looking for a move up to 45 currently, but based on the most recent candle, you can see you tried to test $45. Clearly sellers are active at this region. Where did 45 come from? It's not some random low I just picked out. It's been here for a few days now. This $45 region was the August high. Came pretty much right into that. And instantly, sellers stepped in the market. This was at one point of time, a full green candle, really strong looking candle, but then sellers closed you right back inside the range at $43, making this look like a pretty weak candle in the daily time frame. But the next step of price action trading is incorporating volume into it. So same example here, we're looking at Shopify. So in each case, you came up to $40, the volume really did increase. You can see that the 30 day average was down here around 32 million. And each time you're in this range and you're just kind of chopping sideways on relatively low volume. But now in this most recent breakout here, going back to November 29th, what happened here? So not only did you come into $40.96, $40 you came into this level with a pretty strong looking green candle. You open the day down here at $37, you close at the high of the candle right into this level 4096. If I was someone who bought puts up here, if I was a short seller, I saw this daily candle form, I would be pretty nervous going in the next day because this is a pretty bullish looking candle. No, no upper wick on the candle. You open at lows and close at the high of the candle, making this a pretty strong daily candle. And like I mentioned, the higher the time frame, the more significant it is, more people are gonna see it. This was a daily candle that formed here on Shopify. So it's much more significant than like the five minute time frame and seeing some kind of candle like this one. So you can see down here, you have some increased volume. You're moving up. And then the following day, after a breakout like that, 
you want to see some continuation the volume once again increased to the upside kind of had a little bit of an upper wick to it so not as strong as the previous day now here you are december 2nd you had a big push on shopify the volume kind of decreased slightly and then you had a big upper wick on the candle showing you that sellers are clearly active in the market and i would be pretty cautious here if i was a buyer trying to long shopify in this region after seeing the daily candle form like that so that was just a brief overview of price action using shopify as an example if you guys are struggling and you're not consistent right now and you have a bunch of indicators in your chart i would suggest maybe giving it a try without indicators see how it goes if it doesn't work out for you i don't know what to tell you if you're still inconsistent even using a naked chart then you might be out of luck unfortunately but if you guys learned anything or this video helped you just let me know in the comments below and stay tuned for the next video thanks for watching